Okay, we're going to learn about graphing various functions. And before we start, we find it very helpful to have a library of functions that we know what they look like, so that we can look at different versions of those same graphs and already know what the shape will be. So we're going to go over five functions that you should know the shape of. y equals x squared, as we already know, is a parabola. So it looks like this. We're going to note for the purpose of this discussion that the most important point is the vertex, obviously, which is originally at the origin. Okay. y equals the square root of x is actually half of a parabola on its side. Okay. And once again, the most important point is the point that came from the vertex of the parabola, which again is at the origin originally. y equals the absolute value of x actually looks like a perfect V with its tip at the origin. So its most important point is that tip. y equals x cubed is quite an interesting graph. I like to call it an Ikea chair because it looks like some of those crazy chairs they sell at Ikea. It has this nice pretty swoop. The most important point is again at the origin originally. It's the place you put your behind when you're sitting in the Ikea chair. And lastly, we're going to look at y equals 1 over x. This graph is very different than the others. It has a horizontal and vertical asymptote that meet at the origin, and then the graph sits in between them. Now, what we're going to learn today are what are called graph transformations, which is if you know the shape of a graph, you can, do a shape, you can sketch a similar graph with very little work. Notice these are not going to be perfect graphs, and in fact, the thing I'm going to tell you to do is to not label points, because the more points you label, the more chance there is you labeled something wrong. So the only point I'm ever going to label on one of these graphs is where that most important point of each graph has moved to. Now, vertical shifts are when you add a number after the original function. So we're going to look at two examples, x squared plus 3, and the square root of x minus 2. Now it's vertical, but it will be up with a positive number added and down when you're subtracting a number. So in this case, I would have the original graph, which is x squared, and then x squared plus 3, I would take everything and move it up 3. So the only thing I'm going to label is where that vertex now is and it would be a parabola with a vertex at 3 on the y-axis. When I go to, to graph square root of x minus 2, I start with the square root of x, whose most important point is at the origin, and then I move everything down 2. So its most important point would now be at negative 2 on the y-axis. Horizontal shifts are similar, only there's a little bit of a twist. A horizontal shift is when you add or subtract a number inside the main function. So you notice the minus 1 is inside the cube, the plus 2 is inside the fraction. When we did vertical shifts, adding moved it up, subtracting moved it down, which is what you'd expect. When you do horizontal shifts, it's always backwards of what you'd expect. So adding will actually move it left, and subtracting will move it right. So let's look at our examples. In this one, we're going to start with x cubed, the most important point is the origin. I'm subtracting 1, which means I'm really moving it right, and my most important point is now at 1 on the x-axis. We look at this example, which starts with our asymptotes right along the axes. Because I'm adding 2, I'm actually going to move it left 2. So this moves my asymptote to negative 2, and the graph moves along with it. Again, be very careful, you only ever need to label one point.